Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the late one. Welcome, welcome. Let's Sometimes I'm not sure if people are connected and uh, just have to keep trying. Okay, Stacy Wilson is there. Okay, so we got somebody's there. So it's working. It's working. Hello, good evening. Just testing the waters. Matt Birch, hey, good evening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Late one, uh, Silburn here. I want to wish you a wonderful um, uh, Thursday. Uh, wonderful Thursday. And I hope you're well, Kenesha Henry. Good evening. Uh, well, today is 70 years of the NHS. I've got to give a, a big shout out to the NHS. Um, if you look on my page, I, I made a big shout out to the NHS saying, Congratulations to the NHS. And uh, I say, Congratulations because, because of the NHS, I've uh, been able to, my children, came out of the NHS as well you know well not came out of the NHS <laughs> came out of my wife <laughs> but um, the NHS was very crucial in the whole process so because of that one has got to um, acknowledge uh, the, the NHS let me see something here Okay, <clears throat> hey Rupert, how you doing? Rupert, uh, I'm gonna say, Rupert, that you will have to invite yourself on because I'm not seeing a particular thing that I can invite you on. Or maybe you'll have to change to your phone or so. I'm not seeing a particular icon. Yeah. Errol Townsend, good evening, good evening, Princess Nasua. Yeah, 70 years of the NHS, uh, fantastic. The National Health Service in the UK, a uh, top of the line service, top, top, tops of the line service, something which is second to none and something which is to be protected. Welcome to the late one with silver, you know. And uh, the, the sun is still great. The sun is still fantastic, you know. You know, the, the, the sun is still great. The sun is still fantastic. Um, we're having a wonderful summer here in the UK. Uh, Jamaica, eat your heart out. We've got it here. Um, wherever in the world you are, um, we, we've, we've, we've got it here. We've got the sunshine. Um, there's no doubt about the sunshine that we have here, which is, which is really fantastic. Um, congratulations to England, again, for get, stepping up into the next round, um, which I mentioned. As I said, it's coming home. Uh, people may not believe me, but as I said it before, it's coming home. People say I must dream on, and I say, well, you know, you got to, you got to. You, you. Ah, Rupert, fantastic, Rupert. You are a good man. You're a good man, Rupert. So, um, so with with, with England um, there, um, without a doubt, you can celebrate with us. Uh, Rupert, I sent you an invite as well. Um, let's hope you can pick up that invite. Uh, there's an invite which is adding you on. 
and it says it's adding you on, it's adding you on, it's adding you on. Let me see if it's going to keep adding you on until it, it have you on. Um, yeah. Ah, you're a good man. Look at that handsome young man. That handsome young man which is out there. Thank God. <laughs> Not handsome, but hanging in there. <laughs> I never knew you were that handsome. I, I, I thought I was the handsome one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the brownstone water. It's the brownstone water. Yes. You, can you hear me clearly? Absolutely can you... clearly. Absolutely. I don't know if it is me or you or, or some volume thing. Um, let me let me let me just ask persons if they can hear or, or some volume thing. Um, let me check if it's my volume. My volume is top right now. Okay. Okay. No, no problem. No problem. This is something. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me, can you tell me, I must ask the ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Stacey, you, Matt, can you let me know if you can hear me very clearly? Can you, Rupert, say hi, say anything, hello. talking to me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Say hello, Rupert. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Testing one, two, three, testing. Yeah. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. It's just a bit low, but but yeah. but but I'm hearing you. Just want to make sure that we are and you know. Yeah, let me see. Uh just want to make sure that we are let me just turn this down. Okay. Anyone, you know? mm -hmm. One second. Uh, okay. Well, anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, um, Good evening and uh, welcome for coming on tonight. Uh, I've got Mr. my guest, Dr. Rupert Francis. Uh, and uh, Dr. Rupert Francis is the chair of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force. Uh, Yulo said he can hear us very clear. Rupert is lower but can still hear. You heard that, Rupert, yeah? I hear, I hear everything, yes. I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. The, the person said you, they, they can hear you even though you're a bit lower. Yeah. Okay. But we can we, we, we can hear you. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna turn off one of my phones uh to see if there's no there's yeah. no they have we may have had some feedback. Yes. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, Rupert, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I have um Dr. Francis on board today is I'm um, following up on the topic of returning residents in the Caribbean, in Jamaica. And uh, you, you, I did a show a couple of weeks, uh, a week ago, after the death of the Andersons. The Andersons were returning residents from Manchester, mm -hmm. um, um, the UK. And I, I spoke with Percival Latouche. Percival mm -hmm. Latouche is the returning residents chair, president. And I also spoke to Barrelman. Yes, <laughs> as well. Yes, I spoke, um, to both. I spoke to both persons as well. Thanks. Yes, you know. So, so without further ado, I, I've, I've invited uh, Mr. Francis tonight to have a discussion on the whole issue regarding return residents, the importance of global collaboration on any security recommendations, the treatment of Black mm -hmm. Englishmen representing England even briefly. But Rupert, I'll add to this that you're in North America now, isn't it? Yes, yes. But yes. I was trained in England. I, I went to school um, in England, military school, several years ago. Yes. And, you know, I went to uh, what was called Mons Officer Cadet School. It's now Royal Military Academy of Sanders and Mons. And I went to the Royal Military Police Training School and Warminster. And so I've had a lot of association with Britain over the years. Yes, yes. So, so anyway, let's let's talk about um, as the chair of the, the, the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force. Yeah. What is what is? Tell us about that, sir. Well, I just want to make sure the, your listeners understand that what we're attempting to do. I am also an advisor, board member, advisory board member to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And what I am trying to do, and many others, we have task forces to deal with certain issues. I adopted yes. the task force for crime 
uh, two years ago, and we've been working assiduously with the government to see if we can improve, assist the government in improving security issues in Jamaica today. And one of them, of course, involves the returning residents that we're speaking of today um, and other issues such as um, gang training, best practices, so on. Well, Dr. Logan um, of the, let me give you the structure of the task force. It's located in the three major diaspora centers. One is in the UK, which is run by, uh, headed by Dr. Leo Logan and uh, Elder Dorman. And in the Canada, it is, held, it is led by uh, cap, former Captain um, Kevin Jr. and Shauna Cassell. And in, in the USA, it is headed by myself and several other people. It includes Captain Peter Whittingham of the LAPD and many others, which is a larger jurisdiction. So basically, we have three chapters um, worldwide, and we work together as one to see if we can advise the government where when asked to do so. And we have a pool of um, experts, uh, both from yes. not just from the legal fraternity or the law enforcement, military, psychology, because we believe it's a multifaceted approach to criminal um, activity. Okay, okay, and and with the and with with the recent uh, incident in Jamaica regarding yeah. the, the killing of the Andersons, uh, it is something which is of concern and questions that anyone will put to you, because yeah. as a person who is part of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force, it must have some sort of reach to our concern regarding the diaspora. That's the well, key yes. factor there. Yes, one of our mandates is to certainly, as diaspora reps, to, uh, the, to achieve the Vision 2030, which is a safer security um, that, uh, of the nation in itself, and to have economic, um, economic activity uh, coming in and out of the country. So it's, that's a major concern. And so when, it, when somebody returns to Jamaica, they're saying to us that they're bringing back their investment, they're bringing back themselves, to give back to the community and to live in peace for the rest of their lives. So we have to encourage that because there are more Jamaicans overseas than there are in Jamaica today, or people of Jamaican extract. Just imagine if we have over 5 million people abroad, approximately they say, descendants and what have they were to come back to Jamaica with their, so their, their nest eggs, so to speak. Can you imagine what that could do to the economy? And if, yes. if, if they, if they atmosphere does not um, encourage that, then we are going to be having some serious. So this is a major, major concern, must be, and I believe the government has tackled it, has started to tackle, you know, and they have been tackling it. But we are saying we would like in the diaspora to be part of this solution, and we will ask the government to make sure that they, they speak to us in the diaspora together as one, and to see if we can assist them further in reducing this um, criminality uh, that has really taken on this uh, this uh, group of people. I, I want to ask this question um, while we're at it so we can be interactive. Yes. Someone just said, good evening, sirs. Was your organization involved in the planning and or implementation of the state of emergency? Why wasn't this also a part of St. Catherine North Southeast? Um, I just showed that one of the person asked the question. Okay. Uh, well, let, me say, let, let me say this to you. I, we, we cannot say that we were directly involved in the planning stage, but we know we were consulted. The government consulted us and, um, in many respects and asked us when it, when it came to ZOSO. They gave us the documents. We researched the document. We gave our feedback. And so, therefore, we're integrally, you can see we're integrally involved. We have proposed several um, initiatives in regards to social intervention. In fact, I was just writing back to the ministry just recently to explain that, for example, we started a, what shall I say, a karate championships uh, under the auspices of one of the only black belts in the world, I mean, sorry, um, Hall of Fame of Black Belts in Jamaica. His name is Newton James Foundation. And we wanted to take this discipline into the schools. That's just one project. We now have another yes. project that we are working on that is to bring into art and into the library and so on with, with, in collaboration with the Canadians. So, and we have also proposed to have 
gang training because we have some of the best gang trainers and um, heading worldwide in our organization. Okay, so okay. To that question for your, your listener, yes, we were consulted, but we would like to know that not only were we just consulted, but we are at the table working and assiduously to try, because we do have the know-how, um, you know, in the organization and right throughout diaspora. Anybody can put themselves forward to assist us in reaching this objective. Right, right, right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, good evening. I'm with Dr. Rupert Francis, who is the chair of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force, where we are talking about issues regarding returning residents in Jamaica, importance of global collaboration, any security recommendations, treatment of the Black Englishman representing England, even briefly. And I'll add to that also the American as well, because you're from the States. And it is this, yeah, this is not something which is only for, uh, Relating to a uh, couple from England. Now let's go. Let's go. Let's go let directly just, into. Let me just also, let me just please. Say the issue yes. of deportation from the so-called first world to the second to our world and so on has impacted us over the years. The question is, yes. we don't really know how much, and we have to be looking at that now to see if there are solutions to that. In fact, we have engaged. We have opened up a arm of our organization in Jamaica that deals specifically with that. And I, I have a number of um, persons who are deportees who are doing so very well in Jamaica. And we're hoping to yeah. use them as a model to move forward to reduce any impact they may have on, on crime and violence in Jamaica. Yes. So from that perspective, we are all involved. Canada, UK, and the USA. Yes. Right. And ladies and gentlemen, please share this video as well. Um, to any of your persons within the diaspora as well. Uh, share this video on your page. I would appreciate that to get this going as I seek to always bring these topics which are very relevant and, um, and touch into the core of things. Now, for a person in the diaspora now, the USA, Canada, uh, the UK, wanting to go back home now, what do you think is one of the key concerns that they have in light of the, the recent killings of returning residents, even though it is not a lot, but one is too much, you know? You know, <laughs> here's, here's the thing. No matter, it, when, when I was in the military, we used to do a thing called reconnaissance or forward planning. If you're going somewhere that you've left for 40, 50 years or 30 years, you have to find out where you're going. It's, you're not, it's not the same people that you left. It's not the same issue. So you have to know where you're going and you have to plan for that. My view is to keep that population safe and, uh, you know, like anywhere else, because there are some parts of this world in Los Angeles, in, in London, and at, wherever it is, I would not be going. Okay? It's the same thing. It's no longer a quiet place and so on. Some, maybe I have friends. I just spoke to some friends who moved back to Jamaica today. I was on the phone with them for almost an hour. And they live in Falmouth, and they live in those areas, you know, in Jamaica. They are together. They're in a community and that sort. These are things that we have to look at. So maybe what we ought to do is when people are planning to go, they have a, we have a system whereby they can reach out to us and reach out to the government or wherever they want to reach out to so that we can discuss it and we can give them advice. They just don't go off their own, um, what should I say, initiative, as so to speak, and, and, and because they may not know what they're getting into. And so, so, so when, when, when persons are planning to come home then, yes. what is, you mentioned about just going to different places, but, yes. um, you know, why shouldn't someone be able to just go to their mm -hmm. dreamland, go to their, the, the town where they came from and build their house and feel confident and safe? You know, you know, let, let me tell you something. I don't know, you know, of the case of Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick was the world champion boxer, boxer. Yeah, right. yes and he went to, back to portland where he is from and he ended up in a altercation with his relatives over land and he was chopped to death the world champion of oh boxing. yes i okay. forgot that so, yes yes so that indicates to you that there are there are there's lots of people in jamaica who hold on to land as if land they can take it with them when they die and they they they, they mm -hmm. take umbrage to people coming from overseas sometimes, you know, so there are sibling rivals, there's a lot of stuff, you have to make sure that you know what you're doing, and you're capable of defending yourself 
and you're, you know, you're not in harm. You came home to relax. You came home to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So all I'm saying to you is be careful where you are going, know where you're going, and furthermore, we have a responsibility in the nation as well to make sure that these persons are documented where they're going and we can respond and so on and we can assist them in their own security. It's not a question you don't know. I am from Ocherius. And there's some parts of Ocherius now that you would not recognize when I was a boy. And I would not, where I was living, I would not live there anymore. And so therefore, I recommend, it is prudent, it's wise. It's not, to, I'm not, I, I, Jamaica is a place to be. I tell you, I, I own a vacation in Jamaica. I go back to Jamaica on a number of occasions, but you have to understand that some of the people who you're coming in a contact are not very nice people. And let me just make one thing clear. The people who have been attacked, they were not attacked by strangers. They were attacked by people who they knew, people who they had even funded their education, people, young people who just have a different view of, who, of these people coming into our country. So there's no respect anymore for um, elderly people. These people are both elderly people. Come on, did they deserve that? No, of course not. But at the same time, we have to make sure they understand what they're going through and they don't just do it because they, or they can do it. No, I, I, I suggest that they have to be careful. You have to do your, 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 your due diligence, as it were. Yes. Because, because what I understand is that the, uh, this particular killing Yes. was done by an employee or or someone the son, an employee son. The son of, that's correct the son of an employee yeah and um you know I, I, let, let me say this to you the only thing that can really stop all of this is that the security forces we have to join with the security forces and we have to yes. we have to be vigilant ourselves if a young boy of 17 18 all of a sudden comes into our 20 comes into a mass of money Nobody questions it. What happens to the people who receive the money? What happened to the people that he bought the things from? Who, and this fellow is not, for example, not working. Shouldn't you be, uh, um, you know, be aware of this and what have you? So, you know, it, it's, it's, not a, it's a very serious situation that has to be addressed from a corruption point of view, um, from a moral point of view, and an ethical point of view. So we really have to understand that we're all involved. Because it could be us. A, a bullet is no respecter of persons. It can go anywhere. Or these people cut these people's throat and burn them. It's the, to me, it's one of the most egregious types of, of killings that I have uh, come across. Because it says to me that that person is obviously hates that person because of their success. And we have to okay. try to get rid of that. So, so, so therefore, um... Returning residents need to think about security. Absolutely, yes. Of themselves. They've got to think about where they go to. Yes. They've got to think about who they associate themselves with. That's correct, yes. And the information, got the information that they have, you can't, for example, flash your stuff and, you know, you know, make people know that you have money and that sort of thing. Um, you, these people, anyway, when you look at where they were living, it's not like the case of the previous one, the gentleman, Mr. Walker. His house was a beautiful house, uh, you know, in, 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 and I know where it is in, um, in St. Mary. It, these people didn't really, the place was not that, um, you know, uh, it was big and it's, you know, nice and so on. It's obviously, they took a lot of time to put, and put into that property. But at the same time, they must have, somewhere along the line, somebody must have given the information that they had a couple of money. Because these people, uh, they, they spent over fifty-two thousand pounds on their credit card, mm -hmm. and maybe they destroyed it at that point. Well, right, so there's some scamming thing was going on at the same time. There. Yes, I think so. Yeah. All right, some solutions then. The, the government and through the conservative force say they are planning to implement strategies yes. and support systems to bolster yes. the security and safety yes. of returning residents. Yes. What's your, what are some of these? I've got something here, but what, what do you understand are some of these to be? Well, the, first of all, you have to understand who's at the head. The Commissioner, the Major General um, Anthony Anderson, and he is a very serious man. Is he and back in Jamaica? Yeah, he's Jamaica. He's Jamaican. He went to university. No, is he back? Is he back in Jamaica? He was well, in the UK. No, Sorry. he's actually on it. Yeah, he's back in Jamaica, but he's going to Canada and the USA next. So he's doing a round robin, which is very good at this point in time to 
I guess, to assure the public that we are doing something. And I do believe that they are. Um, the ministry itself has, has taken a very big, you know, the, the government and the ministry has taken a huge stance on this, that they're not no longer going to tolerate this type of thing, and they're going to, uh, they're making, of course, they can't talk about everything that they're doing. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at, first of all, maybe they're going to put a data collection to know where these uh, returning residents are, try to get some sort of immediate response, some sort of communication with them, and to check on them on a regular basis so that people see, the, the, you know, um, aware that they are not alone and that they have, um, they have uh, support. And so I think that's where the government is going to come in and, and then do that. As for the specifics, um, I'm hoping that in the next uh, few days and weeks, I will be able to speak with the powers that be and find out how we can help, how the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force can be of service to them. And you see, let me make it quite clear, though. All our listeners, your listeners, my listeners, everybody out there, need to say, look, it's time we go and do something about this. We have been working alone. I mean, in many instances, we have worked with groups and what have you. But everyone can add to the table, just as what you're doing. You're sensitizing everyone, okay? They must support you. They must support things like this. They will support Barrel Man and all those people. And, and um, Percival Lustertouche in his efforts to see if he can get everybody together. The more we are together, the happier we shall be. That's my view. United we stand. And, and you know, if no man is an island. I just wrote that today in a response to something. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's grief is grief. And each man's joy my own. You never know when that gun or that knife is going to turn back on you. So you have to be proactive rather, rather than reactive. Well, a couple of, couple of the measures which the government has actually put forward is, um, yes. one, uh, establishing a service to do background checks mm -hmm. on requests of persons yes. uh, who returning residents wish to employ. Yes, that's Yes. You know, yes. You know? And, yeah. and one, appointing a liaison officer yes. in each police division to monitor yes. and provide returning residents with timely feedback yes. on policing Matters. Yes, I saw that. Yes, very good. Very good comments, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Establishment yes. of a point of contact for the diaspora to address specific concerns about cases. Um, yes. Rupert, have these things been thought about before or they're just saying it out to make people feel assured? I'm Let being me straight up. Let me say this to you. I do not know why. I think the government should really tell, really, you know, make people aware of how they're doing with the diaspora. We talk to them every day, right? We speak to them, they, inter they send out mails to us, we work with them, and believe you me, I have never, uh, th this cooperation has been going on for a long time and it has gotten better, not worse, okay? So the yes. diaspora is very, very much involved, you know, we, they just appointed a minister of state for diaspora affairs, Mr. Um, Senator Colonel Charles, who visited you. Right? That is to show the importance of the diaspora. But let me make it quite clear. The diaspora needs to, get, to also meet, uh, we need to, the, 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 the greater portion of us need to meet the government halfway as well. You know, because if without them seeing us together, without them seeing us working for this one accord, right? And we, we well together then for, you know, and then let me also say, there are a lot of people out there who come and say they can do this, they can do that. They can't do anything. They're just, you know, they're just making, they're just muddying the waters. If you are serious about doing something about crime and violence in Jamaica, then you must attach yourself to an agency that is doing that, right? And doing that assiduously and not, you know, not, not fragmenting it, okay? If you're really serious about saving lives, that's what I think we mm -hmm. ought to do and support the government policies and the government in turn and, and and they are listening but i would like to see more of it i'd like to see more so that we can get included in it and people can see because the people don't necessarily want to hear from governments anymore sometimes they want to hear from the average person that they know you and me our friends we know what we know and they they, they will believe us see I was thinking on something the other day. Yes. I, I, I saw a video yesterday mm -hmm. um, in a complex in Jamaica where 
a licensed uh, fireman holder shot yes. a, a guard, and yes. there was king alarms there, the security yes. company. Yes. Yes. Now, now, I'm not going to talk about that, but an, an idea clicked on me, which was, and I'm getting someone to speak about this. Mm. Should there be, are there services mm. that these private security firms mm. are maybe offering to people within the dashboard to be like their, their um, direct um, mm. security personnel? Well, what do you think about that? Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. I use those services. Um, when I'm ready, and um, and I know people in the business that, and, and and I think that that's the way to go. I think we need to or to um, talk to the, and I, when I get back to Jamaica again, I'll be speaking to private security and, and and to see whether or not we can work together because there's some other things that are happening that you may not be even aware of. Do you know there's a yes. there was a returning resident who went to his residence in Montego Bay in a certain development. And when he went there, somebody was in his apartment. And the man said to him, you'd better not come back here because you will not leave alive. And he has not been back since. Okay? Mm. And there are people who have land they, they, that people have settled it. I know this for a fact. Right? And they cannot go on the land because people say you cannot come there or you'll be dead. Okay? So the, what I'm trying to say to you, but, um, someone called me from Jamaica, and I don't want to call his name now, but he's an ex-officer like yeah. myself. And he said to me, we need to do something specific, right, to deal with this issue about six months ago. And I'm really, and I've been thinking about it, thinking about it, and I have now come to the conclusion that he's absolutely right. And I'm going to put a call through to him to tell him that when I get there again, we are going to have to sit down and figure something out in order to assist in safeguarding um, the diasporans um, that we know. No, no, you're right. You're right. I, I, I think it's a brilliant uh, thing, yes. and I, I, I also have someone, um, who is going to come on Saturday, okay. from from one of these companies yes. to talk about the their thinking on the whole thing and the services that they can offer to persons from the diaspora. Because the last discussion I had with Percival Latouch, and I also had with Mark Renaissance Cameron in the states there, mm -hmm. a Jamaican, was that the diaspora need to take care of themselves. They need to also start to protect themselves. Absolutely. Um, that is... You know, yes, you're right. You know, and let me say this to you. I would encourage anyone who you are having on your show to talk to the, 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 the people who are engaged, the diasporans who are engaged in this business of crime and engage in trying to engage with the diaspora and, 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 and seriously have a talk, you know, to see how mm -hmm. best we can collaborate in order to get this done. We're doing a leadership summit in um, September in, in Atlanta, the three diaspora reps of the United States. And this is one of the issues yes. that we want to deal with. We want to deal with how we can get the best out of the diaspora to engage with our diasporans to engage with Jamaica. Okay? And, if, and take up a leadership role. The problem we've had in the past, if I might say so, is that there are you know, people who don't, in my opinion, don't really want to see this thing work because maybe they're benefiting from it. But the fact of the matter is that this is an idea that they, you know, you can't kill an idea whose time has come. The time has come for the aspirants to understand that we have the power, we have the influence, we have the wherewithal to assist Jamaica to where, reach where it wants to go. We are not coming there to tell Jamaica what to do. What we want to do is to make sure they understand that we got their back. Now, as, as you mentioned that about that Jamaicans need to understand that they are powerful. Um, one would say it's powerful in this form of words because Jamaica up to this day and the government up to this day have not dealt with an issue which has been poignant for years, which is the discussion about voting for overseas people in, in, in the diaspora. Whether it's a good yeah. thing or not, but it's not being dealt with. You know, and, and but I would say though, I would say, um, not to cut you, Sibyl, but um, Sibyl, but I will say that I have heard a lot of argument for and against the idea. My personal opinion is that I can vote. I own property in Jamaica, and um, so if I want to vote and I'm registered, I can go and I can put in my vote, and 
I would encourage anybody who has that ability to do that and so on. As with regards to the diaspora, I think that once the, the government sees our seriousness, once they see our resolve to be part of Jamaica, not just to make noise, but to really articulate a vision for Jamaica that is uh, for Jamaicans, uh, you know, th then I think that this will happen. I see nothing wrong with that, to be quite honest with you. But there are some Jamaicans and some friends of mine who have said to me, you're in the United States, what the hell do you want to do with, you know, have to do with Jamaican politics? But, you know, this is interesting because I say back to them, you know, but you want my dollar, don't you? When I have my money, you want my money, don't you? Uh, you, know, you, you? If I came here and gave you some money, you'd take it, wouldn't you? Yes, but you don't want to have anything else to do with me? Huh? Let me tell you something, my friend. I am a Jamaican born and bred, and I'm going to be a Jamaican until I die. And I'm more Jamaican than many who live in Jamaica today. And they can take me up on that. Because I have mm. given of my own. Nobody has financed us. Nobody has financed us in the past two years. We have financed ourselves. So mm. we are just as patriotic. We are even more patriotic because we can see what is happening in Jamaica and we want the best for Jamaica. And I challenge mm. anyone to say differently. Okay? I challenge them because I know that that is not true. You know, someone, someone today contacted me yes. and they were surprised I was in the UK. Yes. Oh. It, you know why? why? Because, because they say I'm, I'm so in touch with issues going on at the yard. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, this is it. No. This, let me tell you something. Silver, let me tell you something. They better grow up and, and, and they better wake up and smell the coffee. Let me tell you, you know more and I know more about what is happening because we get it every day. First hand. If I show yes. you some of the some of the voice notes that I get and so on, you'll be surprised, okay? And you know, even my family, they, I wonder what's wrong with me. All I get up and I think about is Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. But the fact of the matter is when we were growing up, we were taught to love Jamaica as our country. We were taught in civics classes and what have you, the national pledge and the national anthem and it has never left us. Okay, so let me make it quite clear. You let them know. In fact, a Jamaican, anyway, you know, <laughs> when I walk into a supermarket or anywhere, and I hear, I do, sometimes I hear the Jamaican, I go up to the person and say, listen, you must know what you're saying, you know, because you don't know who's around me. They look at me and they open their eyes. I love to do it. I love to make them know. And we laugh and they know what that laughter is all about. Because that's Jamaica. That's the Jamaica that I know. I'm not saying every Jamaican is all good, but I'm saying to you, I'd rather associate myself with a Jamaican than any other nation on earth. Okay, simply. Uh, you're because... right, you're right. Yeah. You're right, because I, I just see a common by feel yes. um, from Ultra Rears. Yes. I feel like Ultra Rears. Yes. Well, as I, at length, I think yes. I should, as, uh, when everybody knows I'm from Ultra Rears, because I always yes. say straight out of Ochi, just like yes. yourself. Ochi, yes. <laughs> so I, we're still... and I didn't even know that you were from Ochi. <laughs> Yeah, my original uh, comment by Phil said, Hi, Silver, a very interesting topic. Yes. Mr. Francis is so correct by saying to be careful of one's surrounding. And also, one should be careful how one conduct themselves with spending their money. Absolutely. I visit Jamaica yearly and stayed in the same house where I was born in Ottawa's without yes. a fair. So it has to do with the community where one is from. And yes. you know my community, Silver, you know? Of course. And, uh, and, you know, I, do and I, I, I must... I do too. I'm, I'm the Wilbur from right under the clock in Ochi, right? We still have an Ochi <laughs> under the clock. So make our understand. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, the, the thing about it is like, even where I'm from in Ochi, I've got to be also aware that those guys, which I normally walk past on the street when I was a little boy, like the Rasta guy that named Tari and Ilip yeah. and Philip, yes, and you're yeah. walking through there late in the, yeah. late yeah. In the night, you might be walking and say, oh, that. See more, yeah. I more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're cool, but you don't know the new persons who are there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing though. I go on the beach at um down there, um, Sailor Hole, and I mean some Sailor of my, Hole, yes, yes. Some of my friends that I went to school with, um, dread like hell, and you know everything. But boy, same thing, and they know you and they respect you, and they, you know the the same thing goes, and um, it's amazing. They you know the reception so 
to be quite honest with you, uh, you know, if you do not forget where you're coming from, Silver, then I know yeah. that you will get where you're going. And people recognize that. You're not going there to show off. You're there because you genuinely... But you know, what hurts is that uh, when I think of the people who go back to Jamaica, they're going back to give back some of themselves. And these youngsters who are maybe watching movies and don't understand what it is to love one's country, um, they are destroying something that they cannot even build and, and, and replace. And so that is the part that worries me, that, you know, that we, some Jamaicans will say, you know, I'm not going to bother and just abandon the place, you know. Uh, but we, we can't do that. We can't allow that. We have to fight to make sure that we, are, we remain relevant, yes. So what do you say then of uh, a, a Jamaican in the UK, in the USA, wanting to go back to Jamaica, wanting to build a property in Jamaica, and it's sort of, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. There, there okay. was a caller came yeah. in. And, and yeah. Someone, someone wanting to go back to Jamaica, wanting to live in Jamaica. Yeah. Someone, some, someone wanted to go back to Jamaica, but they are now having second thoughts. Mm -hmm. What would you say to such a person? Well, here's, here's my view. You know, I can't fault anyone to having second thoughts. At least they're having a second thought. And that's what they should do in the first place. When you're looking to do something, you have to take an evaluation. We call it, um, you know, in, in, in the military, um, you know, we, we, we have to find out what you are, uh, appreciation, we call it, and, and as to what you're doing. And so, therefore, you really should think about it. And not only should you think about it, you should think about where, okay? Uh, personally, um, you know, I'm not, I, I used to live in the bush, call it after a while in Jamaica, up in Upton. And I don't think I'd want to live in Upton, for example, right now. Um, you know, it's a big place. It's, you know, it's, you know, by itself and so on. And so therefore, if I, you know, that, that's, you know, that's my view. And that's my preference. Okay. But the fact of the matter is that if you're going to do that, you have to make sure you have done the reconstruction. You go down there, you look around, but don't give it up. Because let me tell you something. You can live better in Jamaica on your money than you can live anywhere else. I don't care what they tell me about Panama, they tell me about this, they tell me about that. But I have been to those places and I have seen the benefits of Jamaica. Jamaica has a lot of benefits and they have a lot of good people. And so therefore, but I say you have to make sure you check, you know, you, you, you dot the I's and cross the T's. And therefore, you know, but you don't, don't just run into it like that. But I would never encourage anyone to stay or go necessarily um, you know, uh, re re just like that, just to make sure we now put a procedure in to make sure that they will be safe. That's all. But we also have to qualify everything like this. We've got to make this qualifying statement that mm -hmm. the majority of Jamaicans are good, law-abiding citizens. Absolutely. That, I'm, I'm sorry I did not get that <laughs> point across. Yes, yes the majority yes. of them are in fact. But let me make it quite clear. If you see yeah. something happening, even in Britain, that it's out of order, it's out of place, right? If you see a group of men, uh, you know, concentrating on this place, or you see guys who are sitting down, they're not doing anything, and so on, they, you know, avoid, you know, maybe you should drive past that day and not, you know, engage with them or so on. Let, not let them know your business, don't let them know where you live necessarily, <clears throat> and don't just encourage people. You know, the guy who lost his life, Mr. Walker, he was trying to help the neighbors to paint his house. I mean, the people in there. And he asked for advice. Well, I always get referrals. And I always ask my neighbor if I'm doing something in Jamaica or somebody, who must I go? Is it a mechanic? If I'm getting a car or whatever. I ask of somebody who I know will not mislead me. Okay? Not just anybody. Somebody who's been there and done that. And I will take their advice. Okay? That's what I would do. So, but the majority of Jamaicans are really, really... It's just unfortunate that you have a group of people. And man, I'm not going to play any blame at the feet of anybody, but I know where the blame could be, be, be laid. But to be quite honest with you, I'm out of the blame game. I want to say, okay, it's where it's at. You criminals understand this. You have gotten away literally with murder to this point, but it is not, it's, your day is coming. Okay, so therefore, the police is getting sharper, the police are getting stronger, 
and they will get you and the people will get you. They'll formulate a plan to get you. So please, you need to stop it now. Now, um, regarding crime and regarding punishment, yes. it is deemed at the same time that the, the punishment are not very doesn't, doesn't fit the crime. Uh, effective deterrence. Yes. They're not yes. effective deterrent. So well, this... you know, <laughs> I smile because I smile because I really couldn't. I really, I'm a little bit um, on the old school with the punishment thing, you know. And personally speaking, I believe that the punishment should be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. If, if, if it's a whole school, if it's an English side, it is hung, drawn, and quartered. Is that it? No, 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 no. We're not talking about. <laughs> We're not talking about William Wallace now. We're not talking about William Wallace. <laughs> Let's um, check in, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not as, not as, but to be quite honest with you, when I was a youngster, and I tell the story and people laugh, but when I was young, I remember there was a guy, his name was Thaddeus Hyatt from Labyrinth in St. Mary. And Thaddeus Hyatt killed 13 people, including a little baby. And I hid under my bed for, for, for months because I said, boy, you know, what a wicked man. And the day when they hung him, the whole nation, is if, if it was as if the, the wind had left, the, 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 it, was, it affected everybody, you know? Yeah. And I can imagine his, his, his family, how it affected them. And, but you know something, and I'm not telling people to do what, they, but to be quite honest with you, if a man kills someone and he does not believe that he himself has the possibility of being caught, okay, or being um, done away with, then he'll keep on doing what he's doing. Now, you don't have mm -hmm. to agree with me. I'm a, I'm a chronologist and I've looked at both sides of the issue. Um, I have um, I've looked at the issue whereby, um, you, you know, no death penalty versus death penalty. And I know the arguments and I'm not going to get into that. But it's my personal view that if some of these youngsters knew that if they were caught, what would happen to them, they would stop it. That's my view. But you don't have to agree with me. Um, as, as I said, it's my own personal thought, and it does not represent the views of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, okay, of which I lead. It is just my personal view. Um, and, you, you, you know, we have to be careful in life, you know, when we do things. How can someone just take someone's life like that? You know, yeah. they pay thirty thousand dollars in Jamaica. If you go and hiss your teeth at somebody or diss somebody, somebody shoots you. And people are now loaning guns. They are now like you can go and rent a gun. Well, let me ask you a question. Well, uh, well, you see, crime. Crime is now really an international phenomenon. Well, for years, but it yeah. is getting very close to persons, as you know. I put on that function the other day about the a knife crime in the UK as well. Yeah, yes, I saw that. Which, 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 which is actually touching the core of people because it is coming close to home now. Yes. And people realize they've got to react. Mm -hmm. And also people are selling knives or lending knives or lending guns as yeah. well. Same phenomenon. But the key thing, which is somewhat very similar, mm -hmm. is the treating of life so cheap. Life yes. is like nothing anymore. Yes. Yeah. But you know something, though, my view, let's just give you the global view now um, that I, of the organization which I represent. We believe yeah. that, um, we believe in restorative justice. We believe that, you know, we should not take a person in and throw away the key. We believe yeah. that if we can, we can get to the crime, because it's intervention and prevention. I gave you my personal view, but now let's talk about the more academic and uh, view that that we profess and I do um, have that 100% is that we start at the very young we start out at the very young and we we, we we with the tree and you bend the tree train up a child in the way it must go and when it is old will not depart and we remember we, we, we take it from there and we teach them values we teach them ethical constructs we teach them the you know the idea of reducing conflict you mentioned the, um, the yes. incident with the man the other day and the king alarm people and so on and so forth. Let me make, say this to you very, quite clear. It was horrific. I've never seen anything, both on the side of the, the, the gun holder and the, the king alarm. How can a con, how can that thing get out of control to that point? 
So we need to teach conflict resolution from its early stages, both from the police, everybody. You know, nobody's exempt from this. So that we can resolve our conflicts, not with a gun or a knife, but with communication. That's what I believe. You, you, you said a key point there, conflict resolution. Yes. Conflict resolution. Because right. people, are, the lack of tolerance is out there now where nobody wants to spend that time. Years ago, we used to take a rock stone and throw a bus ball ahead. Or, yes. Yes. or, or, we, or growing up in our trips, I used to break dance. So we used to have dance competition. <laughs> and I mean, who can win? No, I, just, ways. I defer. I call my brother, my big brother. Everybody free them. So I never had no, my, that was my <laughs> resolution. They beat up, you know what I mean? And um, so I had that privilege. Um, but yes, you're right. But right now, as I know more and as I grew older and I recognize the importance of being able to resolve conflicts in a particular way so it does not get out of hand. That guy is so lucky he didn't kill that guy. I mean, you know, and so therefore, yes. you know, and therefore, when, let me tell you something. I learned along the way and I thank God for my guidance, you know, and people who I, you know, who could help me. And uh, some of my ways have changed a lot because, you know, and, you know, not to rush to judgment, hot-headedness, and that sort of thing. It's something that you have to learn. And we, we are in a privileged position now that we can engage the youngsters from early. That's why we have this, um, we have a club called... Um, I think uh, if a call comes in, it may affect Rupert, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I hope he's able to come back. But that's what happens sometimes if a call comes in on your phone when you're doing a Facebook Live. Uh, I've been speaking to Rupert Anderson, uh, Dr. Rupert Anderson, who is the chair of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force in Jamaica. But he's based in the USA, as you know, the Diaspora Nation and so like that. Um, I'm going to see, I'm going to get him back. He's going to come back shortly. But uh, because that call sort of interrupted it. Uh, some of the things we were talking about, and the last one we, uh, we spoke about conflict resolution, which was the last bit there. Conflict resolution is something which is very powerful. I believe even in the UK now, with the young people, conflict resolution is something which somewhat needs to be taught. Maybe it needs to be taught in school. What do you think? As a topic, conflict resolution. Should that be a topic being be taught in school, how young people can actually... Uh, diffuse situations. Um, those who are from Jamaica or even on my page, you may have seen this altercation uh, with uh, the security guards and this um, gentleman. And uh, even if it is a fact that he owed money or whatever, like that, but you saw something escalated, escalated where someone got shot and someone could die. I think the person is still stable or in a critical uh, uh, situation. Um, and and as and as a result of that, you know what we're what we're seeing is whereby there's a lack and a a lack of tolerance where people can actually um uh, what should I say learn to talk learn to discuss situation. Uh, Rupert is coming back. I just get him back on, uh, and uh, uh, sort of summarize up where where we're at. Um, Rupert, I'm bringing you back on. Um, going once, going twice, going three times. Let me see if I can get him on back. Approved. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. But but anyhow, until I try to get Rupert back. But I, I've seen some of the comments which have been um, which have been which have been up. Some some are saying that uh, uh, like this, those criminal-minded young people in Jamaica want what others. Um, want what what others have and do we try to take and steal it by any means necessary you low says i don't think the government is valuing the returnees i'm sorry sir we're talking talking but do we don't have faith in each other that's one of the words which we <clears throat> which we hear a lot of time is talking talking even in the same thing with the discussion regarding uh even even the knife crime thing or, or so in the UK, we talk about talking, talking, talking. I had a forum the other day, and yes, it was talking, but we tried to bring forth some solutions. But from these solutions, then I believe that one needs to operate and take on it. Now, conflict resolution, as someone said, 
uh, that is going to be one of the proposals that I'll be putting forward as one of the solutions that in school there should be a topic or some workshop on conflict resolution. There should be some workshop with, with young people as to how they can actually uh, um, diffuse things and do some role playing situation, you know, um, you know, play uh, karate or Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That that happens when a call comes in; it will cut you off. So I was aware of that, you know. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, that, that's okay. That's okay. I, I know. I, I it could have been a a, a security thing, so I I, I was uh, I'm happy to to, to let yeah, you be. No, no. <laughs> it, it was you know I I I'm turning on my phone. I'm using my iPad because um it, it, then the call should not come in and, and cut us off. But yes, what what, what yeah. was the point that I left on? Uh, the point you left, I think we're talking about conflict resolution. Conflict resolution, yes. It's absolutely yes. limited. I taught conflict resolution for a number of years. Oh, by the way, by the way, somebody said they missed you, they, they missed your teaching. Uh, okay. Who is it? Do you know that? Andrew Stepp? Do you know Andrew Stepp? Yes, Andrew Stepp, of course. I remember him, yes, of yeah. course. The art he said one of the, one of the best professors I, I ever had. That's what he said. Yes, <laughs> I appreciate that. Andrew is always a very good guy. Very, um, I remember him so well. You know, he is very smart, very smart. And he's, he, you know, he, people say artists are not smart, but that guy, Andrew Step, very, very smart. Okay, so yes, there it is, Andrew. I told the whole world. So basically, that's yes. it. Yes. yes, so you're saying now about the conflict resolution. Business. Yeah, I taught it for them a number of years. And at, at first, you know, I, 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 I even though you're teaching, then you, after a while, you get into things like group think and you know group resolution, your unity of purpose and all that sort of thing. And you begin to understand why it is that, you know, there are conflicts there, you know, what happened, for example, at the Challenger disaster, you know, and what happened at the Bay of Pigs. And you can learn from things like that. You know, and what yes. happened the other day um, with um, with the young the gentleman and, and the King Alarm and what have you. They have to learn, and it is training, education, and experience. You have to train people to behave like that. You know, yes. if, if a policeman is passing you and a, somebody shout a bad word at the policeman, you don't have to. You don't have to even bat an eyelid. But they will go and say, "Boy, we are saying that you know big things happen." No, you can't. You have to learn to ignore stuff, even in your own lives, in your own in, in your own home. There are times when you have to learn. There are times when you can't. But there are times when you have to learn how to ignore certain things. And I think in Jamaica, the mere fact that every time, you know, they, you know, as you, as you go forward, you know, you have an issue with somebody, you take up a stone. Not stone, as I say, in the old days, no man go gun and come shoot you and, and kill you. That they don't understand that as a final act. And the reason why they do this is because they're not accountable. So with yes. conflict resolution, there must be an understanding that there is the prospect of being caught. And if the prospect of being caught is greater than the act, then you will think. So therefore, and, and we are introducing, and as I was telling you, uh, as a social intervention policy, uh, a karate championship in, um, in, uh, on the uh, Newton John James Foundation with our, our, our organization that is going to bring yes. karate in the schools Right. Okay. Give a level of discipline. Yes. Just like how we have champs, we're gonna have championships. So then, when these people learn, karate is not a fighting sport. You know, it's a disciplinary. It's a way of life. We have to train, mm -hmm. retrain, unlearn these kids from this massive um, cable TV that they've learned stuff from, and thinking that life is just expendable. Okay. And yes. there's another thing too. The churches have to go out there and recognize and go back to them. Everybody, when they die, they want to go to church in Jamaica. Well, to be quite honest with you, my other solution to that, and I'm not even I'm going to say it because, you know, if, if you live a certain life, right, why would you want to then think that you, when you die, you must go at a certain place? You see what I'm saying? So therefore, you know, people knew that we reject that. We reject the fun yes. violence, the right, of violence against our children and our women and the underserved population, the weak right, then they wouldn't do the things that they do. But we have to stand up. We have to get laws with teeth. 
And people, not only the laws, the laws exist. People who will take carry out the law right, fairly, and justly. Yes. Some someone just said uh, people need anger management as well. That's another thing Absolutely. out there. Anger. Yes, that's correct. Anger management and that sort of thing. You know, um, we are all entitled, and we are all human beings, and we are we are prone to be angered. Um, but at the same time, you have to. There's there's a limit. But in Jamaica, there seems to be no limit. You know, yes. there seems to be no limit. Mm. Right. So so Rupert, so Rupert, in wrapping up now, what yes. is our key advice then to returning residents? But before we do that, before we mm. do that, mm. let's look quickly on the whole scale crime situation like in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Is it is it out of control? Is it under control or is it as it always been? Well, we know there's always honestly, honestly, a, a year ago, a, a few months ago, it was out of control. But since the state of emergency, and I think you had asked me a question and I forgot to comment on that. But since the state of emergency, and somebody asked why not in St. Catherine, I think it was. Since the state of emergency, crime has gone down by at least 50% or more. Right? In those years. But that is not sustainable. Because you only have a small force. The Jamaica Defense Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So we have to find, but the, the crime, so there is hope. The people yes. are getting more sensitive now. Because let me tell you something. If crime goes unabated, it will affect everything. Our investment, our tourism dollar, everything. And people are afraid we're gonna ha they're going to have a brain drain unprecedented. Okay? So therefore, we have to address this issue of crime. And I yes. don't believe, and I like you, I don't believe that the average Jamaican is a criminal. I don't believe that. Jamaicans are one of the most fun-loving people. But when they get yes. vexed, is a rat when they get vexed, not true. So we <laughs> have to make sure that when they get vexed, there is another solution. Okay? Yes. Don't just go kill the man for the sake of killing the man. And if you kill the man like that, then you ought to pay the price. Mm. Okay? So therefore, my view is it is getting better. But we have to sustain that. And in order to sustain that, we in the diaspora must come together and insist that this is done. Okay? We can't sit on the sideline anymore and talk about say, somebody else should do it. Okay? That's called the bystander effect. We don't want that. You have to get involved. Yeah. And you have to get your children involved. You have to get your family involved. Okay? And you have to say, there are neighborhoods, you know, that these criminals do not go to. Do you know why? Because they know what is coming if they go there. Right? Mm. Both poor and rich neighborhoods, they know. So they don't go there. And there's a reason. So we have to now model other communities like that so the criminals are, you know, and then we would, we would, we would have more results. Plus, we don't forget that the ports are porous. The ports are porous, and so on. So we need to find a way of stopping these guns from coming. The, the, the guns are coming into the island. They were man manufactured there. So I mm -hmm. think that the answer to that is yes, it is getting better. I have great hopes for this new minister and for the commissioner of police who you met recently and the minister yeah. of diaspora affairs mr charles because charles, yes. yes to be quite honest with you i've never seen a more serious set of people okay and the mm. opposition too i spoke i spoke to percival Latouche and all that other so i know that there's goodwill but we have to make sure that we are the watchers you talk about voting and what have you we have to prove to Jamaica that we are worthy to decide on their future, even though we live abroad, in a mm -hmm. sense. Okay? Um, in, in my opinion, we, don't, we can't go there and browbeat them and say, you shall do this. No. I think it should be a mutual affair, collaborative affair. So, yeah. so therefore, what you're saying then is that Jamaicans need to be aware, yes. uh, be smart, but yes. support the government and its initiative at the same time Absolutely. to reduce crime. Um, yes. Utilize these key uh, words of advice, like be careful who you tell everything to <laughs> your, in yes. your business. Yes, yes. yes. Um, some of some of the strategies that the Sorry government is actually seeking. Sorry for Margaret. Exactly. You. So you have to be careful. Yeah. As well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And any any last word, Rupert, before I go. For, for I, let well, you I, want to, I want to thank you, uh, 
so much for exposing this issue. And I keep, I want to encourage you to keep on doing that. I want you yes. to bring people on and I want you to hold them accountable. I want you yes. to hold the powers that be and make them understand that the diaspora is important. Yes, we may not have the vote, but at the same time, if we were to come together as an economic, political, and social force, not political in the sense of politics, but in terms of a social force, we can be of invaluable help to Jamaica. And I hope that they understand this and they have to support the players, the people who are genuinely out there, who are putting their lives on hold and they are, they are doing what they have to do for Jamaica then we ought to recognize that and support them. Because when the people see that, the efforts are being um, you know, looked at and being understood and being received by both the public and the private sector. There's no reason why we should have to be doing this on our own. We need the support of everyone to do this. That's my view. And I believe yeah. myself, like yourself, Rupert, we are from yeah. Ocherius. Yes. Uh, we are patriotic to Ocherius even even more than Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, yes. and and my philosophy, my philosophy is that uh, my wife is from Ocherius as well. Yes, um, yes. So therefore, I have no issues if I have to go back to Ocherius. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my wife is you know? from Ocherius too, yes. Yes, yes. So, so, so therefore, my philosophy is that, um, as you rightly say, we can't uh, have a go at people or, or dismiss their concerns as to their question about wanting to go back home to Jamaica. No. Um, but for myself and my house, we will go back to yard, <laughs> Jamaica. Yes. yes. And, and, you know, I, and I propose that, you know, but we also must understand that we have, there are steps we have to take. You and I don't have that problem necessarily, but there are other people who do. And yes. we have to protect those that go back, and we have to make sure that they're protected. We have to put in uh, systems in place to do that. But in order to do this, we should not be ignored as the diaspora. We should be embraced. And we must speak in the diaspora. Stop. You know, we need to speak with one voice. Yes. One, actually, one vision with one aim. So Marcus Garvey was right. One aim, one heart, one destiny. That's what we have to do. And so therefore, you know, and if we love each other and we practice the Christian love and, and whatever love, you know, it can be any, you know, I don't favor one religion over the next, you do your thing. So long as you have ethical principles, moral values that are going to necessarily um, guide us throughout. Because most of these guys who are doing these things don't understand. They don't have father figures, right? And so on and so forth. Right, and you know, their mothers are not as strong as mine and yours, perhaps. But if I, my mother said to me, Listen, boy, I brought you in this world and take you I out. will take you out. And so, therefore, my mother is the first terrorist that I knew because I mm -hmm. was terrified and I just behaved myself. Okay, and if I can come from a place in Ocherius, which without this uh, fanciness and what have you, and be where I am today. I thank God for that. Well, well so Rupert Francis, yes. Dr. Rupert Francis, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yes. And, uh, and keep up the good work with the Diaspora um, Initiative um, uh, and, and, um, and, and for persons to get hold of you, ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is just click on Rupert's name online. Um, but remind me of your page again, uh, Rupert. Yes, it's the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force. Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force. And all you have to do is send me an email at C, well, Captain Shorten, C A P T Francis at Yahoo.com. C A P T yeah. Francis at Yahoo.com. Very, very easy. Or contact Sidiol. He's on it. He'll just give yeah. you the information. Yeah. All right? Yeah. You know, you know, my, my family used to say that um, I'm the one that is the contact the contact person for anybody in the whole world. For the family <laughs> connected, uh, Rupert. Listen, thank you, yep. thank you so much. And see you in Ocherus. We will have a cold beer some point Absolutely. soon. Make sure we do that. I look, for, I look forward to it. And thank the listeners for, for, for sharing, share the conversation, keep the conversation going. Um, focus on the positives, not the negatives. And we should be a, a better and a sweeter Jamaica, Irie. Thank you, Irie. Okay, okay, sir. Bye, Rupert. Thank you. Bye -bye. Sir.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, you heard um, Dr. Rupert Francis from the Diaspora Crime Prevention Task Force. Uh, thank you so much for joining. To, to flag up that point which I was talking about, I just wanted to find this article here, and it is it is something that the government is actually implementing for persons um, taking consideration the whole issue regarding um, the, the, the shootings of, of um, Jamaicans overseas, or not just Jamaicans overseas, but persons within the diaspora traveling back to Jamaica. They say, the move comes against the background of recent incidents of murders and other acts of violence against returning residents and complains that enough is not being done by the JCF to protect these persons. In a statement afternoon, this afternoon, the Jamaica Conservative Force assured that the safety and security of returning residents remain a high priority. <clears throat> it has been considered to establish a service to do background checks on requests of persons who returning residents wish to employ. So therefore, if you want to employ someone or you plan to employ someone um, when you return in Jamaica, it is not that you don't just trust person, but I mean, it's anywhere. You're not going to just bring, even in the UK, I'm not just going to bring anybody in my house to paint or anybody in my house to in the, to do my gardening. You, you have to do your local checks, whatever, you know, depending on the, the level you do your, your, you do your risk assessment. So the government is, is offering to do a risk assessment. Appointing, a, I don't know about the cost, if there's a charge to it, but that's what they're actually saying. Appointing a liaison officer in each police division to monitor and provide returning residents with timely feedback on policing matters. Establishment of a contact for the diaspora to address and specific concerns about cases. Um, meetings will be held regularly at the divisional level to enhance the sharing of important information. Deputy Commissioner of Police Crime of crime self in haze he says there's to be a review of unsolved crimes committed against returning residents okay now a long time people have been talking about this and um the government is actually making uh making um making a move in in this and uh, the diaspora plays a fundamental part i see lots of questions a lot of conversations going on and guess what i'm going to be doing I've got a classmate and uh, that I went to school in Jamaica. I always keep my links with my people in Jamaica, no matter what. You know, even a mate of mine is coming up to the UK sometime back in a couple of weeks now. My links. keep Always keep your links, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your links back home. Don't burn your bridges, you know. So one of my mates, um, I'm going to be having him on, on Saturday uh, to talk about these private security firms. And he's involved with a private security firm. The service that they may be able to give to uh, returning residents as well, uh, as much as possible. There's a lucrative business in Jamaica, and people have to start to take um, responsibility for themselves as much as possible. Time is not what it is as it was before. So without a doubt, one has got to actually do things which you have never done before. I don't know what you think about that. And also the area of conflict resolution. Conflict resolution is a powerful thing, ladies and gentlemen. Conflict resolution is something that is needed in the whole aspect of crime fighting. Crime, conflict resolution, I believe it is something that needs to start being taught in school with young people. In the UK now, we mirror it with the UK now, with all knife crime and the youths and everything. Conflict resolution, how we can actually diffuse. You saw that video with the in jamaica with the security personnel the guard for that complex the guy who just said didn't owe, owe some money one with a hammer the guy with his gun bum and mr vegas who is our number one top jamaican uh reporter who is on the scene you know um and uh so therefore it, it is very crucial that um one exercise these things so i want to thank you so much Samuel Sanders, the problem is that Jamaica is facing its lack of opportunities through the island, lack of education and from the government that governs the people, the greed and not having the ability to share and to make sure that the people of Jamaica is benefited from top to bottom. Adrian Dawkins, you said, hello, you know, bad manism, bad manism seem to be a badge of honor. We need to shame these bad manism in Jamaica. Also, communication and respectful communication need to be applied. 
Sometimes disrespectful talks lead to negative outcomes. I believe that if you speak negative um, into situation, you will somewhat will sow a seed of negative energy and that negative energy will manifest negative actions. And that's one of the reasons I have a simple policy on my Facebook page. I don't engage with negative discussions whereby it reaches to the point of rudeness and calling names. Nothing is wrong with having opposing views and having energies. But once it gets into the point of being rude and disgusting and out of order and calling names, I disappear. I know I disappear. I block and delete. And I have no apologies for that. I just keep it simple, you know. Um, and and Dr. Rupert Francis w- was very good. Um, I think he's got a lot of fans as he's a professor in the States. Um, um, Samuel Sanders, lack of education in terms of uh, thinking outside the box instead of being one trap mind. You talk to folk, listen to how they respond. The mindset of Jamaica needs to be changed in order for change to take place. I'm also a firm believer that the majority of Jamaicans are good and exciting and great and powerful and wonderful people. And I believe that there's a minority of Jamaicans who create havoc, a minority. Likewise, if I marry that with the States, with the UK, I believe there's a minority of children, youths, not kids, who are creating problems. The majority of them are great and fantastic and doing great things. Let's make that very clear. You know, I don't think the government is valuing the returnees. I'm sorry, sirs. We are talking, talking, but we don't have faith in each other. Gregory Forsyth, great discussion. You know, great discussion. Lorna Foster, good evening. Lorna Foster, one location is imperative. Keep your circle small. Trust no one. Be streetwise. That's my motto. Um, J.R. Nelson says, speaking to private sector, the big man and profit and government climb, patron, corruption and loss of that. Thank you, Gwendolyn Turner, Yulo, Nathan Anderson, cousin, Louis Garden, Andrew Stepp, so one of the best professors, Rupert Francis, want to thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got to say tonight. But guess what? There's some great things which are happening. The Prime Minister is at Chequers tomorrow with her cabinet where they're going to be talking Brexit. I think um, there's going to be something in the air where there's going to be a soft Brexit or it's going to be... You see, I get excited while I get excited when they come on to Brexit. <laughs> and next week as well, Trump is going to be here. Ooh, ah, yeah. Um, you know, but Brexit, she's going to be having this Brexit at Chequers. Chequers is the Prime Minister's um, away home or whatever like that, uh, where they're going to be having discussions as to some, some touching up as to some deals which they're going to go with Europe and uh, it could create or it could make or break the prime minister. Uh, some people say uh, uh, not dead man walking, dead lady walking sometimes. You know, that's a term of saying whereby she's on a, 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 a eggshell uh, or a job could be on the line. Well, every prime minister job is always on the line, but uh, we're going to see the outcome of that. That's going to be something big uh, or may not be something big. Brexit seems like something which is strangling people around their neck as much as possible at this time. Oh, this Brexit thing. What is Brexit? I mean, you're going to have Trump next week. Uh, Sadi Khan, who is our mayor, I understand he's running to be the president of the United States of America. Uh, Sadi Khan, I understand, is going to be... Uh, guys, I'm just kidding right here. There's a joke I put out there. For the record, don't say that I'm saying Sadi Khan is running for president of Jamaica. But based on how he's operating, one would think that he's actually running to be the Democratic um, contender to run for president of America because he's so much in opposing um, Donald Trump and not focusing on crime in the UK. Crime is something which is to be at the top of his list. But yeah, yep, he approved this balloon of a half-naked Trump-like figure going over, over, over Westminster. I think that is so silly. I think one needs to grow up now and let's grow up. Because at the end of the day, you cannot stop people from being government of their countries. And so that the UK is in a pivotal and a key position at this moment now, whereby people have got to grow up. I think the UK... And the mentality has somewhat changed to a certain point. That bulldog spirit, that vibrant spirit, that fighting spirit has gone down where persons are becoming like wimps. The liberal agenda, the leftist agenda has somewhat make things somewhat so insipid. Maybe that's a term. And you know, those are my views. That is my little rant there uh, as much as possible. And Salisbury. Salisbury is back in the news again. Whereby the same the, the strip cell, the strip cells who had their uh, this so-called uh, poison by so-called Putin by Russia who was in, in, involved with it. Russia is saying we have nothing to do with it. But now another couple um, have been 
somewhat being affected by something similar to the nerve gas. One don't know. But anyhow, it is in Salisbury again. So therefore, they are talking about Salisbury being affected by these things in the sense of their tourism trade or whatever like that. No matter what, what they're saying, will people go to Salisbury? Just like that now in light of what is happening. So much there. So therefore, government is trying to find out what is happening there. Uh, Russia now, there's another diplomatic thing is happening where the UK, Saudi Javid, is making sounds toward Russia. But hey, Russia is just focused on winning the World Cup. World Cup? Could be. Did I say that? Well, why not have a Russia and UK, England, Russia versus England? The final for the World Cup. Yeah. They said if 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 the UK ever or England ever win on a penalty in any game, hell will freeze over. And ladies and gentlemen, I saw a picture of hell, which they say is hell, completely freeze over. Okay, it's just a joke again. Just a joke for purpose of information and entertainment. You know? So anyhow, I want to thank you so much for coming and uh and uh see you around on the next time and saturday i'll be having a good mate of mine talking about private security in jamaica and the role it can play in assisting and empowering and giving security to returning residents and also for your purpose as well if you're traveling because times have changed and one has got to be wise now okay mr city and mr rupert look i'm from geisel all the water in Ochi is coming from guys, so be careful. My hands are on the top. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, Rupert. Um, so, okay, Moral, no problem. We make sure we'll be a good friend because we want good water coming down from guys. Okay? Come and buy, Bill. Don't uh, employ anyone. Thank you so much for coming. And peace out. And see you around on the other side. Guys and uh, Dean, hey, how are you? British Brain, Andrew Nelson, how are you doing, sir? Thank you for coming on Instagram. And uh, thank you for coming. And remember, ah, I need to say this. The 5th of August, we will be Solution Oriented Summit, talking about knife and gun crime and all those things. We'll be at Crystal Palace on the grounds at the basic Jamaica Basic School Foundation. Powerful, over 20,000 people, we believe, going to be there, near to 20,000 people. And we're hoping to get a marquee there. Yes, it's actually a done deal, actually, just to get the logistics now. And what the plan is to do is to assemble speakers right through the day, talking on stop and search, talking on knife crime, talking on black men as effective role models, talking about mothers and the impact they have on their boys and their children. And so that we don't say kids, let that make that clear. Someone from the trauma unit in a hospital talking about what happens when knife victims come someone from the legal side in when they are dealing with these cases when they are defending perpetrators what they go through some you talking about the struggles that they have ex-gangsters talking about what it was like being a gangster all these different facets as much as possible and if you have any other ideas let me know but we're going to spread it out near to maybe 10 speakers that's my dream and my dreams normally come true ladies and gentlemen trust me i know I'm a dreamer that makes things into an action and into a reality. Okay? Peace out. All the best. See you around. Silburn. And I'm out. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this show. Like Silburn TV on Twitter. Silburn TV on Instagram. Silburn TV on everything you can find out. Except Snapchat. Peace out. Bye-bye.